Don't be a flake. Don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't hesitate to say, hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, Tonight the music seems so loud. I wish that we could lose this crowd. Hey, babe. It's better this way. We hurt each other with the things we want to say. Hey, babe. What's up, babe? Speaking of hurting each other, so I got a seven-day-old daughter. Yeah. Doctor told us. I said, hey, can we go to a little July 4th BBQ? She said, absolutely not, the pediatrician. She said, during the pandy-wandy, if, God forbid, your, your seven-day-old old daughter got a fever, just to rule out COVID or anything else, we'd have to give her a spinal tap. So she said, you know what? We'll stay home. A spiny tea. A spi- a, a tap. They give her an S-tap. They give her an S-tap. Oh, I- my God. How does that work? On a baby that's the size of a... I don't even want. I don't even want to know. I have no idea. All I know is I'll tell you this: I haven't slept in about eight, nine uh, days. I'm delirious. My fitness pal app, yeah, out the window. I haven't even. You're not looked logging. At it. Sal, she, uh, in nine days, eight nine days. I'm not lying to you. I've gained thirteen pounds because the gluttony. The, no, no, Sal. <laughs> The way that I've been eating, <laughs> you gain a pound and a half a day. Do you understand? Because let me tell you what happened. <laughs> you gain a half a pound every eight hours. Let me tell you what I just did. Even right now, on the way here, I called you. I said, "Hey, you're ready to go." You said, "Give me a few more minutes." I said, "No problem." I went down the street to pizzeria. I yeah. ordered three grandmas, a regular slice, and a chicken parm garlic knot with a diet Dr Pepper. Three grandmas, a regular, and a chicken parm. No, you didn't. It's in the front seat of my car. Oh, that's, right now. that's massive eating. Yeah. yeah, and then this morning. Oh, and then also, by the way, I just want to give a quick shout out. Let's I want to give a quick shout out to Americano Cafe on uh, on Staten Island. Americano Cafe. I don't know if you've ever been there. Americano Cafe. No. I, I went in for an iced coffee, and I also got a pound cake. And the lady said, she said, would you like this heated up? I said, no, nah, I'm okay. She goes, I really can't let you eat this unless I heat up the pound cake. What does that mean? I said, what do you mean? Is it stale and she had to make it softer? I said, what do you mean you can't let me? She goes, trust me, the difference between eating this heated up and not heated up is insane. I said to her, hold on. Is, okay, go ahead. I said to her, wait a second. Like you're telling me it's a, it's a world of difference. She goes, come here. Takes out a piece of the pound cake, says, try this. Breaks it off. I'm not making this up. Breaks it off with her hands, no gloves. And I just was- She di- broke you off a piece. She broke me off a piece of that pound cake bar. Yeah. Cold, ice cold, said, taste that. Yeah. So I taste it. Forget the fact that she just used her bare hands. It doesn't matter. Mm, I say, okay. Me. I say, it's pretty good. She goes, give me 25 seconds. <laughs> Puts that piece into the toaster oven, hands it back to me. She goes, now try it. I took a bite. It was the best piece of pound cake I have ever had in my life. Had I not heated it up, I would have never known that. I am now going to make an effort in my life to every day go to the Americano Cafe inside. I don't know if it's the Irby or the Derby. Oh, the Irby. The Irby. Irby. Inside the Irby Derby on Staten Island to go get that pound cake from the lovely woman working on the counter. I don't know her name. But she was a fantastic person. She told me to have that pound cake. She said it was next level and it was next level. And I ate that pound cake, which give or take 350 cows. Black Ice Coffee said, I'm good. I'm feeling good. Black Ice Coffee. I go Black Ice Coffee. Who? What do you mean? Who, who, who's coffee? Black Ice Coffee. I, 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 the guy at Irby or who? No, no, no. Black Iced Coffee. You thought I was saying Black Ice Coffee? For a moment, I did, yes. Wow. Black Ice Coffee. Were well, you ready for this? How black about, Ice Coffee. Well, how about this? I Every- thought the guy that worked there made you... Oh, no, a Black Ice Coffee. Black Ice Coffee. Black Ice Coffee. Black Ice Coffee. I told you about the story with me and did I tell you about did I tell on the podcast I don't know why, already? Because you were talking about a woman and you had a woman's pound cake and you were like, then I got a then I got the black eyes coffee. To be honest with you, if we ever got into the coffee business, black eyes coffee, not a bad name for our brand. Yeah. Black eyes coffee. Yeah. And black eyes coffee, and it'll be me and you and blackface on the thing. <laughs> 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 not a good idea. Not a good not Check not out good Backyard idea. Bar Wars, July 8th, <laughs> True TV, 10 30, right after an old brand new episode of Impractical Jokers. I think Thursdays just, are for the base. Just get black friends to invest with us. That's what that's we it, could Yeah, because that's, that's, that's easier and more authentic. Yes, more authentic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The average adult weight fluctuates up to five or six pounds per day, Sal. I know I do. It all comes down to what and when you eat, drink, exercise, and even sleep. So I've been getting no sleep, no exercise. Have, have, okay, ask me when the last time I had a vegetable was. When was the last time you had a vegetable? I don't know. 
You don't even know. I don't even. You got to have greens. Your body's going to. Let me tell you something right now. I'm with you all the way. To be fair to I'm you, I, I threw out my. <laughs> you got a disco ball. I threw out my uh, my fitness pal app a long time ago. I'm, I'm trying to rekindle with it now. Hey, we just added tickets. Providence, Rhode Island, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We have opened them up. Go to chrisdcomedy.com. Those tickets were sold out forever, but we added seats, capacity. Uh, no more Chrissy half capacity. Now it's Chrissy full capacity. Go to chrisdcomedy.com. Providence, July 22nd to the 24th. And uh, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, August 18th to the 21st. Go to christycomedy.com. That's T.T. Jerry's phone is ringing. He will be there, but he can't leave state lines. But once he's allowed to, he's going to start coming to my show. Here's what I'll tell you, and I mean, and I g genuinely mean this. Yeah. Because first of all, obviously, you know, and the fans, uh, obviously, the Hey Babe No and Homeless Pimp. We love you guys, by the way. We're and, looking right at you. And Homeless Pimp has texted this to me privately out of nowhere for no reason. So. You are, you're hardy with a body, and we know that. <laughs> but I just want to tell you, I just want to tell you that. That you're a guy, yeah. you're a guy who I feel <laughs> you look good any weight. When you've that's, been 20 pounds mm, over, it's fit. When you've been 20 pounds under, it's fit. That's sweet of you. I'm I guy, don't. I look and I see I hate myself. Well, no, but that's what we all do. Yeah. I'm a guy. Right now, I'm just about, I would say, 6 to 10 pounds away from getting the fat face and being now noticeably... Out of shape, fat, feeling disgusting. That's impossible. No, you Sal. were just in the shape of your life. It's gone quick. You you fluctuate that fast. Sal. As do I. I gained like maybe in the last two two months, I've gained up over 10 pounds probably. And I lost two months before that, I lost the 10. I have fluctuated on camera even in my life. Um, let me think about this. Since the show started, I have fluctuated 40 pounds up and down like five to four times. Really? Yeah, yeah. I just it's just it's just what happens. I, I get into a mindset, I lose lose weight, I get to a certain goal, I'm like whatever, and I just and then I don't I don't look at my weight again until it bothers me again. And I just and I kinda do that. I've done that my whole life. I ping pong back and forth. But I'll tell but let me ask you this. But are you but does when your weight goes up, does it bother you to the point where as soon as you wake up that day, you're like, I can't believe how disgusting I feel, and then your day, the tone of your day is set negatively from the moment you wake up. 100% accurate. Really? Yeah. Or like you'll look at yourself in the mirror, no shirt on, and be like, and almost be terrified at what you see. Like uh -huh. you can't imagine like how bad it is. A hundred. That's how I feel. Yeah. That's I, how I feel about myself. I'll avoid mirrors. That's how I feel. But but then how do we get out of that? Because it's not eating right. Because I, I can't, I've already kind of given up now on the fact that I'll ever be able to get healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to eat right. And, it, and it, sometimes it doesn't take... And then it takes like months and months. What's the most you've ever went up and down? What's the most you've ever lost in your life? Okay, so at one point, at one point in 2014, in uh, uh, January, February of 2014. AD. AD, yeah. AD, yeah. AD, I went, I was 256 pounds. Okay, but you're a tall guy. But 256 is 256. Sure. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just actually... I have. I don't know. I knew you then. Yeah, here. Did here. I know you then? Hold on, wait. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you a picture of me, and then I'll send this to you, pimp. I was two hundred and fifty-six pounds. Well, it, you you know you would never know that you're not you don't feel confident because you you are dressed like a blue leopard today. Yeah. Well, I want. I this is like a almost like a peacock type of shirt. See, I like I I walked in. You were just a vibrant burst of energy that came through my threshold. Is this too much? Or you think this is this no? Is but I'm saying it's not indicative of the way you feel inside because because I thought this was a good Fourth of July. Sure. I love it. You right. walked in. It's the first thing I noticed. I think it's a nice reflection of your personality. Okay. But you're telling me how you feel inside, and that's not what that shirt is saying. Yeah, because because inside, inside, I feel... Here, I'll show you a picture of myself when I was 256, and this is what I feel like right now. I don't know if I necessarily look like this guy right now, but I feel like this guy big time right now. Oh, wow. Okay, I see the weight there. Yeah. Yeah. But that's also the face you're Can making, we get this huh? on the screen, Pip? If I text it to you now, <laughs> yeah, or, right okay. what, what is this a picture of? I don't. So this was this was a picture that TMZ took of me and posted on their website. No. I swear to God, we got one of my friends got this off. That's a bad angle. I don't know if you look, but it does it, it does look heavier than you are now for certain. Yeah. And this was me right before. <laughs> <laughs> Let's throw that one up too. Yeah, yeah. And then this was me. This <laughs> why this. is that in your phone? Why is that in your phone? Shout out Mike Pichetti. Yeah. Uh, 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 um, so, so, so I was two fifty six. Yeah. Uh, January or February of two thousand fourteen AD. By by <laughs> August, August. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, by August because I met Jasmine Delilah's uh, mother, um, uh, my girlfriend in in. 
in in July of 2014, she was pregnant. Told me she was pregnant in August, early September of 2014. Okay. Um, by that time, 256 January February. By that time, I was 210. I had lost 46 pounds. That's, is that the most we've ever lost? Yes, in in four or five months. But then, as soon as my daughter was born in May of 2015, so about a calendar plus year later, I was back up to about 240. That's, that's my that's I your life. yo-yo all the time. Let me ask you a question. What did you do to drop to 46? Boxing. Yeah. Boxing, huge. Second thing I did, I cut out 100% dairy. I didn't worry about bread. I just ate no... I'm talking about... Is, if I, is, if, dairy, is dairy as bad as sugar and carbs? I just... what ha, I don't think so, no. But I just said if I don't put... So anything that had dairy, a cake has well, dairy. You're just sucking down dairy at every turn? Is it like you couldn't you couldn't get enough for dairy? Like if you had a car that was older and you didn't mind putting a bumper sticker on it, would you have a bumper sticker that said, I break for dairy? Yes. I would say... I would say... I would say uh, my, my cells no longer break down for dairy. I'm lactose free. I would say... Like for example, and well, I, I didn't mean that your cells break down. For oh, dairy. I, okay. I thought we were like, talking you about you a microscopic level. stickers when they're like I break for, like yeah. it means like full stop. Like I, I think that's what it means. Right. I didn't mean you have a bumper sticker that talked about like whether your enzymes break down. That's what I thought. Dairy, yeah, I, I, but but still, they didn't break down dairy. No, but so you would like were you lactose intolerant? No, I wasn't. I just thought I felt like what happened was is I saw a documentary. I don't remember which one, but about how milk when milk comes out of a cow because it's so pumped up with hormones and all that, it's just blood clots it's just blood clots in pus blood clots in pus and then when you get the actual milk it's all synthetic white dye chemicals but it's blood and pus is what you're drinking so then i went there for the almond milk but then i was like oh but the so i was like okay i'm good just drinking almond milk but then when blood and pus you know the milk that they use in dairy for ice creams and cheeses on pizzas and yeah. cheeses on cold cuts is all the pus filled I know. Like, I'm, I, I'm I, don't, dairy I don't do that because I'll I, do no, it. No, no, no. But if that was, that was genuine. Up, it'll be like stand by me when they're eating the blueberry pies. No, that was genuine. That was genuine because Ooh, don't do it. Don't do it to me. No, 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 no. If I don't you mean, start to if you start to heave, I'll heave, man. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not trying to heave. I'm not. I have, a, I have a weak constitution. I'm not trying to heave. I'm not trying not, to heave. Not uh, not like our, our our country who has a strong constitution. Yes. Happy fourth. Happy fourth. Um, but, 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 but yes, yeah, see when a cow is infected, 90% of the somatic cells in her milk are neutrophils, uh, inflammatory immune cells form pus. Oh. So per spoonful, the average somatic cell count in U.S. milk is 1, 1, 1,120,000. So it is 100% pus what you're drinking that they, so, but, but, so what I would do when I lost all the weight is even when I ordered a pizza, I would get pizza, I would take the cheese off. I never got ice cream unless it was almond milk. I never got yogurt unless it was almond milk. I completely got out of everything. What did that have to do with your weight though? It, I started to drop all this weight. Well, because, because you didn't like it just because it was pus, but by virtue of eliminating those foods, you lost weight in concert with that. Exactly, because now what are you eating instead of eating? Because now uh, uh, a dessert treat for me wasn't an ice cream. It wasn't two Carvel Lanches, which I ate last night. Last night I had two Carvel Lanches, one Reese's Carvel Lanch from Carvel. Carvel one, what? Carvel Lanch. Google it. Carvel, Carvel Lanch. Lanch. It's the best thing Carvel oh, that, has to offer. Is that some offer. new product? No, 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 no. This has been for years. Oh, I, it's almost like a blizzard, a Carvel Lanch, an avalanche. It's Carvel's answer to the DQ blizzard. Wow, they really... I guess you got to do that. They're like, this is who we're going up against. You have to have a similar name. You have no choice. That seems like it could be in territory of maybe a little bit of a lawsuit. It's like Avalanche, I'm not going to speak about it, though. I don't want to speak. I don't want to speak out of turn right now. I don't want to speak out of turn. That if you ask, if good. you put a gun to my head, the best ice cream I think bang for your buck is Baskin Robbins, but there's not one near me. Yeah. So I go Carvel. Lanch. Thirty-one flavors, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And they let you taste test, which Carvel doesn't. They say they do, they don't. Really? At least the one on Third Avenue and Eighty Sixth Street in my neighborhood, they don't. Carvel, if you're watching, and we know that you are, yeah. let's 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 start yeah. making it uh, with the with the samples. And please. just while you have it open, just while you have it open. I just want to give a quick shout out to Briars. You can suck my ass. I don't like wow, your ice cream. Wow, that's the opposite of a yeah. shouty. Yeah, that's a non shout. Non shouty. If you if you Briar, you got a, you got problems with Briars. I got problems with Briars. Talk to me about your problems with Briars. I don't like Briars. I don't like Briars. You don't like them. You don't like them as people. You don't like their branding. You don't like what the company stands for. You don't like the taste. I don't like. You don't the, like the variety. You they don't, don't like have the price enough points. variety. They don't have enough variety. Okay, we hit on it. They don't have enough variety. They got your chocolate. They probably have your vanilla. They probably have. The, they have the tri They got the. What is it called? Napoleon. Napolitan. Napolitan. Napoleon. Napoleon Bonaparte. Neapolitan. 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 No, that's a pizza. Yeah, see, Briars. I also feel. I don't feel sophisticated. I don't. I feel low class. Briars was my. Family's ice cream of choice when I was growing up. 
Well, that says a lot about you to me, Sal. I, I, I always thought it was like good, but no, 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 no. Nothing no. against. Well, oh, but there's some shit ice cream out there. Let me walk it back. I know I got a little hot and heavy with Bryce. I did not mean to. I'm on very low sleep, as I've said. No, no, I no. no. If, you, if you need to let Bryce have it, you turn to camera one and you let Bryce have it. Briars, Briars, Briars. Listen, I know what I just said about you, and I said you can suck my ass, and I don't, I don't necessarily mean that. I'm not saying I love your product. If you do, I support you. I, but for you to. For, for me to say that I would like the people, the good people that do work at Bryce, the CEOs of Bryce, to get on the knees and suck my ass is not right, and I didn't mean that. You overshot that. I overshot that. If you're asking me what I think you can do better, yeah, is then I what I think you can do better is add a little bit more variety, class up the joint a little bit, be a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit tighter with your product, because if you're looking for in an ice cream efficiency and unfortunately if you look back and through history if you look back through history you know take it or leave it these people i'm not saying they always made the right choices most of the time they made the wrong choices but if you're looking for efficiency if you look for efficiency a tightly run ship and putting up good numbers then you have to go to the germans and you have to go haagen -Dazs. yeah everybody knows that everybody knows that but do you think bryce thinks they're even competing with haagen -Dazs? hitler's ice cream that's right it, it is, <laughs> is that, was it around during him Pull up, the, pull up a listen, Taylor 8 Hagen dazs Hagen dazs if you're listening and you, we know that you are, uh, we, we don't know that. This is speculation. We're going to find out right speculation. now. Speculation. But we, we will put you on blast if it's true. I got news for you. I got I got about I got about a, a quart of uh, a lot of vodka in uh, in this crystal there ball right here. There is Tito's handmade vodka. And I got and I'm on low sleep, so I apologize if I'm coming out. <laughs> what do we got? Oh, the Fuhrer cake, an apple cake <laughs> strewn with nuts and raisins, had to be baked each day and left out every night. He was also partial to chocolate biscuits and scones with tea, which he would drink from a Nymphenburg porcelain cup on paper. On paper, if you didn't know anything about this, be like I'd hang out with this guy <laughs> I'd sit down <laughs> well just if you're judging a man by his treats just by his, I mean chocolate biscuits even, yeah. and tea I mean you, we're having a good time lesson learned do never 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 judge a man by his favorite treats never he could be a, 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 the worst person ever birthed yeah birthed Hitler's birthed? made on living with the Fuhrer he loved midnight cake linen linens and tea from porcelain china cups there you go okay well Hagen does yeah, let's get back to Hagen dazs But you know, who do you think Hagen dazs number one competitor is? I, I mean, Volkswagen. J Joe DeRose is going to die. That we're, we're yeah. Here to <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody's doing taste buds now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, oh they're well, doing. They're doing fries, uh, people know, are they doing it in a co co competitive way? <laughs> oh, Jenny's. Honestly, shout out Jenny's. Uh, now, this isn't Jenny. Jenny's, Craig. by the way, sent Joe DeRosa a six pack of pints and never sent me them, which is a little bit unfair. They had a cream cheese everything bagel ice cream that I've been really wanting to try. Cream but cheese everything bagel ice cream? I think yeah, everything bagel with cream cheese, yeah. Yeah. You know what goes good with that? Saratoga peanut butter. Go to oh. yopeanut.com and pick up the no brush pack. I, I, I think that we sold so much peanut butter that we probably should have just sold our merch first because I think every single fan of ours went out and bought the peanut butter. Not that they shouldn't. Yeah. But I just mean, whoo, I think that did well because yesterday I did a slight perusal. Yeah. I was on like the, the gram. You yeah. Know, Instagram. Yes. And uh, and I saw, and I just saw like a flurry of the Saratoga purchases, like, but like, like dozens and dozens and dozens. Yeah. And I was like, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Supporting, all, supporting the all business. Went to, all went to small businesses. Makes you think, though. To, and charity. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Makes you think, though, should we have just opened our own peanut butter cup? Yeah, we should Shout have. Shout out and, Saratoga. And listen, hey, we, we, we love Saratoga, but, you know, listen, we may open up our own peanut butter company. We mm. certainly are going to open up our own coffee company, Black Eyes Coffee. That's right. Black Eyes Coffee. Black Eyes Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of black eyes, got to give it up for Tom Brady <laughs> for winning the Super Bowl. Oh, the Bucks! They what, won that Super Bowl. What they did down in Tampa Bay yeah. was exquisite this year. Um, congrats to you. One of the best players I would think of all time. But you can't mention the Bucks without mentioning Patrick and Mahomes and the Chiefs. They got a solid young team. They got big things ahead of them. Yes. They already have one under their belt, and they really showed up, and it was a really nice game. Love it. How about this? Speaking of competition, guess who has some competition now? Kane Tanaka, our good old ass friend. Friend friend of the pod. Friend of the pod, Kane friend Tanaka. Friend of the pod, Mrs. Kane Tanaka. Sitting there. Oh, as someone just said that we're, it's not Kane. Like there's a, I guess, was Khan? she Korean? Is she Korean? Japanese. Japanese. There's a Japanese, uh, I guess, pronunci pronunciation. Like uh, maybe it's Kane? 
Kane Tanaka. You know, I've, okay. I'm, I mean, I'm reading it, you know, uh, apologies. Well, let's, let's get his name right then, because we have a new Guinness Book of World Record all the way from Puerto Rico, Emilio Flores Marquez. Oh Oldest God. living person, male. He's identifying as male. His age <laughs> is 112 <laughs> years, 326 days. Wow. This, pre- this breaks the previous record held by Romania's Dimitru Comenescu, who died at 111 years, 219 days young. Wow. Wow, so, so this guy's it. 112. L- 112. That's I a mean, great old... Hit. Shout out 112. Shout out 112. Shout out Cupid, Pinny, Diddy, Atlanta. and the fam who you know do it better. Shout out Mace, by the way. I hope you get your money. Oh, yeah. Uh, can you scroll Peaches up a little bit? Uh, it looks like he does not know he's what he's holding, though. But God bless him. God love him. Emilio God love him. Flores Marquez. I like that he still has a fashion sense. Well, because I was going to say, at least in this picture, this face, he looks like he's been dead for quite some time. <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. This picture looks like a dead body that they dressed up and put a plaque in. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like we need photo proof. Uh, we need some type of proof because yeah. he looks propped up. Yeah. Mark has all this amongst 11 kids. God bless him. Married for 75 years. Wife died in 2010. So she lived a long time as well. Underwent surgery at 101. Always an honor to celebrate these remarkable human beings. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. I, I wonder how many couples make a 75-year wedding anniversary. I would say I guarantee not you, like, it's got to be like... Pimp, I don't know what you Google for that. What's the What's the oldest living marriage? What's, what's the oldest living marriage? Okay, here we go. You ready for this? But how long were they married? <laughs> it doesn't make sense grammatically or or in, in a vocabulary sense. Uh, with a broken heart, 105-year-old Walderima Quinteros said goodbye to her 110-year-old husband, Cesar Mora, who died Thursday at his home in Ecuador. The couple has received a Guinness Book of Longest Lived Marriage. Combined age... Oh, 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 oh. So their cumulative ages added up has been the longest ever you know, at 214 years. You know what's great about you is you would... you know Obviously, I know you and the fans know you, but if, if I didn't know that you had any like Spanish in you... Because you have Spanish in you, but the way you just said Quinteros was like a white Irish fireman yeah, yeah. just learning Spanish for the first time. Well, I, you know what yeah. I don't want to do? I don't want to do that thing where people are like, uh, oh, no. you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, do it Do it. How, how annoying people do it. Yeah. Go back to the name. Go back to the name. Do it. <laughs> Hilarious Baldwin. <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead. Read it. Read it. Read it. Read, read that how like annoying people uh, do it. Well, that's not. Where's the, where's the, name? Where's the original? Uh, isn't it uh, isn't with a this- broken heart 105 year old Valdari Quinteros <laughs> said goodbye to our 110 year old Cesar Mora who died Thursday at their home in Ecuador <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I did yeah. it like you, like in Spanish class. Yeah, when they're like, no hablo inglés. Yeah, like I remember my in Spanish class, my boy Pat Finnegan. Yeah, with Mr. Santos. Patty Fly out, Balls. Patty Fly Balls. Shout out Mr. Santos, Archbishop Moy High School. When it was Miss Pat Finnegan's time to read, we would be like the anticipation. We would be like almost passing out from the laughter we were trying to hold in because he would and he knew it and he would just come and be like, Yo soy Patrick La Penguino Estoy, like you know, and then. And Mr. Santos would be like, that's very good, Patrick. That's very good. But we should try, you know, try this, try that. And he could just never get it. And dude, we would be, I mean, dying, yeah. dying laughing. That's that's literally one of the only the only real memories I have from high school are me catching uh two teachers hooking up in the in the cafeteria. Like Whoa! not having sex. Not having sex, fully making out. Yeah, but Okay, but were they a public item, or was it? Did you did you find them making out, and no one even knew about their relationship? There was always speculation that they were an item. There was always speculation they were That's having an affair. Ballsy to do it on school prop. Yeah, I walked into the cafeteria. I walked to the cafeteria after out, like you know, three three thirty, which is after hours in high school. Sure. I, I walked in. They were having an after hours party. After hours, three thirty. I walked in. <laughs> Because I was like staying to go to the gym or driver's ed or something like that. But 3.30, I walk in and I saw them kissing and I got so nervous, I dropped my beeper. Like I remember I had my, <laughs> I had my beeper in my hands and my beeper fell and broke to a million pieces. And my mother couldn't get in touch with me. And it was a whole big thing. And I'd say, mom. Did they but, see you see that? Yes. Yes. And the, the I forgot it's his not name. on you though. No, no, no. Did he, they, were they like, he was like, what, what are you doing here? What are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I need to go to the vending like, machine. Maybe I, I could ask you the same question. Yeah, what's going on On hand, Mrs. Petrello. Yeah, I was like, I, I, yeah, does you, what does your wife think you're doing here, sir? Oh. Because they were, they were in an affair. So I remember that. It was an affair? Uh, yeah, they weren't. They weren't. They were married to other people, but everybody always knew that they were hooking up. Oh man, it that's was a crazy thing. That's some hot goss. Second thing I always remember: Pat Finnegan 
always laughing, uh, all of us laughing with Mr. Santos. Third thing I remember from high school, 9-11. All right. No, those are the three no, things. You were in high school, 9-11? I was a senior in high. Oh, wow. I was like in the workforce, graduated out of college, like 9 to 5. No, I was a fucking senior in high school. Mm. The teacher came in. I'll never forget Mr. Diorio. He said, boys, both Twin Towers just fell down. There's an astronomical chance if you, any of your parents work in the city, they're probably dead. I swear, then he took a pause. I swear to God, then he took a pause. He goes, let's talk about the Revolutionary War. <laughs> oh, so I swear, oh that's, I'll never forget. It what? was September, and we were learning about America from day one till now. So it was September 11th. We had just started school a week ago. So the chapter on was Colonial America, Revolutionary mm -hmm. War. It was literally as that. Took maybe a three-second pause. That's crazy. He goes, let's talk about George Washington and the Minutemen. So open up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that. Wow. Yeah, and I, I, I dude, it was bad. Yeah, I remember because my mom worked in the. I, I told you this. My mother yeah. worked in the in the second tower. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But she but survived. Thank God, survived. Um, but um, but um, those are the three things. Those are the three things. Three things that I remember. You re you just reminded me that I remember uh, a couple, a teaching couple hooking up in my school. Uh, we didn't see them necking. But uh, but it was uh, it was the art teacher and one of our like social studies teachers, mm -hmm. and his name was Billy Billy Bob. I think his name was right. That was right. his first name, and he had a mustache and he wore pleated slacks. Yeah. And this art teacher used to wear like f like you ever see the episode of Seinfeld with the puffy shirt? <laughs> she used to wear like puffy shirts. Yeah. Yeah, but it was like they were very puffy. Yeah, and they were very, very thin and light. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, sun used to come through, and you would see her her bra. Yeah, underneath the puffy shirt. Yeah, and sometimes she would turn, and the shirt was so billowy that the space between the first and second button would buckle. Right, and it'd be like a tunnel right in through her Why'd bra. Why you see it? And everyone. The best. Everyone, it was so apparent that it was deemed that she was doing it purposefully. I believe she was. I believe at this point, with with the amount of of of, of female teachers that have sex with the students and get turned on by that, I would have to imagine she was now looking back, doing it on purpose. Could be hundred percent. I'll never forget. I graduated from when I graduated from eighth grade. Uh, <laughs> our seventh grade teacher, who I don't know, I have a vibrant memory of this. I don't know why. Where'd you go eighth grade graduation? Where'd you go to dinner, uh, lunch after? Uh. I don't recall. It might have been the Colonnade Diner because uh, for every like graduation and funeral in my family for like 20 years, <laughs> we went to the Colonnade Diner. For literally my daughter's christening, we went to the Colonnade Did Diner. Really? I swear <laughs> to God. We, went, we got her christened my at St. Charles spot. Church and then we went to the Colonnade <laughs> Diner. I also did stand up at the Colonnade Diner. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. The Looney Bin Comedy Club on Staten Island was in the back of the Colonnade Diner for like four years. <laughs> oh my God. I did like a guest set there when I was going to visit my father before he moved to Tampa oh. and didn't tell me. That is unbelievable. Yeah. What kind of crowd was there? You know, the same people that would be at the Looney Bin. The Looney Bin. Uh, same people a, that would be at the Colonnade. Yeah, same people that would be at the Colonnade. Just, yeah, you know, your, your World War II vets, you know, yeah. off-duty sanitation workers. Necking meaning to kiss, embrace, and caress was first documented in 1825. Wow. Referred to as necking because the affection uh, is it's done, done above, above the, the neck. neck. Listen, it makes sense. One time when I was in college, shout out St. Joseph's College, we used to go, my friends, you know, I play basketball for them, Division Three, so it's not like it counted or anything. Nah, don't sell yourself short. All right, but, still, okay. But we would but we would go, we would do like battle shits, you know, just immature sophomore I never, stuff. I never heard of that until Harold and Kumar. So battle shits would it be- is, is it the same thing? Like me and you would go into stall to stall yeah. and, and we would just, you know- just, I didn't know if that was real. I saw It was in Harold and Kumar, yeah. the original one, and the two girls play it. Yeah. And while he's hiding in the, and he hears them- so, so and I was like, "Is that a real thing?" So I go in to one day I'd see, and I'm I'm in there, and you then some, that? yeah, and it's so gross. And I could just see somebody's shoes, and I thought, and I was <laughs> thought it was my boy Ricky who was on the team, and I go, "Ricky," and he goes, "He goes, yeah, buddy," and I go, "Battle shits," and he goes, <laughs> "Okay," like, but but reluctantly, and I was like, "Oh, whatever." So I go, and I'm just ripping, and I. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm talking about like ripping it and it's like just create like that was the point it's like you have to wait till you have to like almost like it because I used to drink nutriments all the time because I yeah. thought I'd get jacked off them but they just gave me explosive rampant diarrhea sure. so I was it was one of those it was a nutriment a nudie shit we used to call it and I, <laughs> and I was literally I mean going like 
And I was like, come on, Ricky, come on. And he was like, he was like, I'm trying, what a buddy. Weird thing. He was like, I'm trying, buddy. I'm trying. And I'm talking about ripping it <laughs> off like it was splattering off the backsplash of the oh, like, like a on. disgusting 18, 19 year old, disgusting thing. Pull up my pants, wipe my ass. I knock on the door. I'm like, you lost that one, son. Like, you know, like just a hit on the door, like blah, blah, blah. He goes, yeah, 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 man. He goes, I'll see you later. So I go downstairs. Not, I don't. I, I didn't think anything of it other than I just destroyed him <laughs> with battle shits. You know, 45 minutes go by. He comes down. He goes, bro, I was getting a blowjob from Deborah in the stall when you walked in. He goes, literally, there was a girl in there with me. I was trying to get a blowjob no. during class. He goes, we were, <laughs> she was dying, almost gagging in the corner because you were screaming battle shits and ripping rampant diarrhea. He was like, I didn't know what to do because she couldn't leave the stall because you would have seen her feet. And I was literally in the middle of that. And I had no clue that you were in there doing that. That's why I wasn't playing along. And I was like, oh, my God. And then literally... It was one of those unspoken things where I knew that Deborah was in there and I knew that Deborah and Deborah knew that I knew. So we just never talked to each other again. Shout out, Deborah. Shout out, Deborah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you went downstairs, Ricky was down there. No. And there was, you don't no, know no. who was in the store. No, stall. Ricky was getting a blowjob from I thought that was going. Wait, Archbishop Malloy was co ed? St. Joseph's College. This was a college thing. I was in college already. This oh. was St. Joseph's College. Oh, so that kind of shenanigans were happening in college? One of the teachers, like in, in like in the in the in the building in the classroom, that's that's pretty. Uh, our college was like high risky. school. It was like a high school. Our college, uh, the first couple of years, then it, then you start to get a little bit more mature. Wow, but in the crazy. beginning, it was it was uh yeah that col that my college experience was you know was crazy like that you know. There was always rumors going around in my high school that there was a one of the Spanish teachers also had given someone oral, and they said there was an actual photo floating around of it. Female Spanish teacher yeah. gave somebody oral. Interesting. You never know if it's true or not. You know, it's just like there's, now, the, there's these rumors. Yeah. I now know. I I I I know at other high schools of people who hooked up with the teachers, like confirmed. Did you ever do shit like we had a vermin day in our school? What does that mean? Like it was like a day when all the kids decided to to cause chaos together. You know about the chaos. Chrissy Chaos Tuesdays <laughs> eleven a.m. Eastern time. We would like uh like. Whoever would partake that day, we would say, oh, today's vermin day. And then you bring in a rodent, a rat, a raccoon, a lot of rats. And, uh, you know, and then you, at, at a certain time, everyone would release them. Mm -hmm. And so there would just be rodents running around and like the teachers would freak out and everything had to shut down. Yeah, I was going to say this wasn't a sanctioned school event. No. <laughs> it was just among the students. We had rice day. Everyone just bought in like a five pound bag of rice, kept in the locker, and now, then in between classes, everyone came out and at the same exact time, went to the locker, cut the bags open, spilled the rice out, and then put everything in and went back to class. And no, then we never did. Teacher any of would that. walk into the hall and there'd be like three, four inches of rice for like two hundred feet. No, never did that ever. I mean, yeah. it's hilarious. Never, not. We ever. didn't. It was it was all boys, so that's probably why we did it. No, I, I was in all boys high school oh, too. Okay, well, I don't. I, but the thing is, really, with with. Because I was a senior during 9-11 right after, like how tightly wound security was all over the country. That it was so, like, you, there was almost, like, no fun going on my senior year. Right, 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 right. Like, the year before they did, like, the year before, I remember in Archbishop Malloy, they released pigs. And they, they had released three pigs. And it was, but they numbered them one, two, and four. And so they like they oh, they, they were looking for funny. three. And they never found, that's it was like a whole really thing. funny. Yeah, they did one, two, and four. Listen. One of the most fun things I like to do is have a circle jerk in Squarespace. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Squarespace. One of, the, one of the most fun things I love to do is just build websites. Yes. Just build them. You ever just sitting there building a website in your glory? Squarespace. If you're not, by the way. Well, I couldn't do it before Squarespace. No. Are you kidding me? No. I didn't build anything before Squarespace. It's one platform. It's an e-commerce. It's got <laughs> domains, marketing tools, analytics, and the ease of ease of use are the things that I'd like to highlight and the things that Squarespace themselves have highlighted on this ad copy as for us to say things that really stick out why Squarespace is the best. It's professional portfolio designs. It's display projects in customizable galleries and add password protected pages to share private work with clients. Homeless Pip uses Squarespace. I use Squarespace. Sal uses Squarespace. I've used Squarespace to build a no-pressure website. That's he used Squarespace to build a new place. Website. I mean, look at this. You can't get more organic than that. Are Absolutely. You Head to go to checkout <laughs> squarespace.com slash hey babe for a free trial. And when you're ready, when you're ready to launch, use the offer code hey babe to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So just go to squarespace.com hey babe. Don't even feel fresh. Feel no fresh. That's right. Network, which turn, is built on Squarespace. Turn your cool idea into a new website. 
Well, I just want to start off. I just want to start off this ad by saying this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Booyakasha! <laughs> BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You know what this is about. I know what this it's is about. Online professional counseling from people that are authorized and educated to do so. It's not a crisis line. It's not self help. No, it's professional counseling. It's done securely. You can start within forty eight hours. Okay, broad range of experts. So you're not. You're not limited it, to the people in your local area. And it doesn't matter. And broad range of experts, broad range of things they can talk about. It, you can go from anywhere from just having a little, if you're a person who just has a little, little anxiety, better help is a place for you. If you're a person that's been incarcerated because you decapitated your grandparents, better has got a therapist for you. <laughs> it's worldwide, prestige worldwide, babe. <laughs> you log into your account anytime. You get timely, thoughtful responses. Uh, and you can schedule a weekly video or phone session. So it's Easy. really, really, really cool. Easy. And they've got the special, got the special offer for Hey Babe listeners. You got 10% off your first month. All you have to do is go to BetterHelp. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash hey babe. You're going to get 10% off your first month. Go talk to someone. Mental health is a serious issue. Better help is the best place to do it. Go go do it. And, uh, you know, if, if you'd like, email the podcast what you talked about with your therapist and we'll <laughs> make fun of it on an episode. Yeah, we t- and we'll take the Hippocratic Oath before and the Florence Nightingale Syndrome. And the night, and the, the night, what was it? The, Flo- the, the Hippocratic Oath and the Nightingale poem? The night, yeah. <laughs> you have to watch. Rewind the episode. Rewind the episode. Betterhelp.com slash hey babe, 10% off your first month. And I remember this whole thing, like if you see the number three pig, like this is an animal. But, but, but like there was, it was the whole thing. The there was first, only ever three. The first week of school, the seniors used to try to sell the, kid, the freshmen pool passes. Uh, There's no pool. No pool, yep. yeah. Yep. So I guess that's a thing. That's an old boys school thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 In my school, they covered the main staircase in baby oil, and everyone Ooh, got hurt. Everybody got that's, hurt. That's insane. That's a, yeah. You could die. Yeah, people got really hurt. Like teachers uh, fell down the stairs. Yeah, there was like a concu- like bad concussions. I believe it, dude. People yeah. got thrown out of school. Yeah, I, wow. honestly, for that, I would, I could, I could understand being thrown. <laughs> like if, I, if my child did that, I'd be like, you deserve to be expelled for that. Right. You could have genuinely killed someone. I, I'm all about having a good time, yeah. but you could have killed someone with that. Oh man. You can't do that. This, this guy, his name was Dr. Caltabiano. He was a Hilarious. speech teacher. He used to be an actor, and he was in a couple of bit movies, one with Jane Fonda. That was his big claim to fame. This guy was very old school. He used to come in like cowboy boots, really tight, like polyester pants. He almost looked like, I want to try and, he looked like a character. Dolly Parton? He looked like a character from like a 70s sitcom. He had glasses. Okay. He had, a, he had a little afro. He always wore a suit that was like with a, with a big knotted tie. You think he's still with us or has he passed? Uh, well, I was guess. in school 30, I mean, ni- 1990. He came in 92. I don't know. He probably was 50 at that time. He still might still be with us. He could be. He was cool, but he was like, the kids took advantage of him big I time. Believe it. And he'd walk in and, and he'd speak very properly because he was a speech. And he'd be like, Mr. Volcat. And, and he had this like accent and, and everyone realized that we could like kind of take, like, take advantage of him. And there was this one kid that used to, uh, in between classes, his locker was two lockers away from the door that, of the room. And he used to come and pound on the door. And, uh, and everyone did this to this guy, this poor guy. Everyone knew to pound on the door and then run. Right. And he'd be like, he would ignore it for a couple months and he'd be like, and then he tried to get him and he'd run to the door and swing it open and look both ways and be like, and come back and be like, I'm sorry about that. And then, and then he'd hit her again and he'd be like, in class, he'd be like, God damn it! Which you really weren't supposed to like. You yeah. Know, and then he'd go, give me one second. And he'd run to the door and he'd swing it open and he'd be like, God damn it! And, 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 and then he'd, he, you'd see him like, there was, the doors had like little windows in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'd just see him running one way and then running the other <laughs> day. Guys would be dying, dying. And then he go get another teacher, and they'd she'd come in and, and see anyone. No, and he'd go back in, and then <laughs> and then my, my one friend would do it all the time. He'd bang, and then the doc would be like, "Hold on, one second. He runs to the door, he swing it open, and my friend was right there, right there in his locker. He was the one doing it, yeah. and he go, Doctor Caltabiano, we went that way. <laughs> he would just take off. He would, he would take off and run, run down the. And he did it to him every time, and he never. <laughs> well, I had one one kid came in one time. We had to have speeches written, and he wasn't prepared. And uh, he was a twin, and I, I forget what his name was. I think it might have been Tim. And, and he gets in front of the class, and everyone knew he didn't have a speech. Like we just, the teacher was clueless. And he goes, he goes, Mister, you know, whatever, give your speech. And he's like, yeah. And the kid stood up in the class, and he just goes, my speech is about the pros and cons of. Eating chalk. 
<laughs> and they just turned around, took the chalk off the board and just started chewing on the chalk <laughs> and eating it. And like, it was definitely like he just did that in the moment to make us have any, he had nothing prepared. And it was, he killed with it. He, he killed us. Yeah. But the, like the, the doctor, the Caltabiano watched him for a couple of seconds and and then he was just, and then he, he realized that like, I think he was trying to figure out if it was real. Right. Because I don't think he should like come down on him if it was real. Yeah. <laughs> but then after two seconds, he, he just he just threw him out. Threw him out and was like, yeah. get out. Yeah. But see, like that's fun stuff. Like, is, is there a movie called Clute with Jane Fonda? If so, that's the movie. It just came to me. That, that's the movie. C-L-O-O-T? K-L, yeah, that's it. Okay, yeah, he was in this movie. <laughs> so if you go to the cast list, maybe I'll find him. In there. Cal Tabiano is his name. Clute IMDB. I don't know if he had like an actual like big role, but he you think always he, used think to he say. think he was lying about it? Or he well, for no, sure no, was no. He used to say, I'm, I'm in Clute, and, and I think we, we confirmed it, but is there anything in there that says Cal Tabiano? How do you spell it? C-A-L-T. Wait, wait. Uh, oh, that was close. Call it more. Uh, okay, keep going. Uh, uh, I might have had such a little part. <laughs> yeah, maybe he did. Oh my god! He talked about it like he won an Oscar, though. You guys ever cut school? I couldn't. I couldn't. You, yeah. Because you're in my high school. I don't know if it was the same as yours. My high school. If I if you didn't show up by eight, say school started at eight thirty. If you weren't there by eight forty five, and there was no note from your mom or same. parent and no call, your parents would be called immediately, and you'd be found out immediately. There was yeah. no way. Or any time during the day, same thing. There was no way to cut. It was impossible. You could, but your parents would be notified immediately, and you got indefinite detention. Yes. Indefinite. Yeah. Did you, did they call detention jug in your school? There was no. one teacher who was always like, "You have jug," and I was like, "What?" Like, and I'm like, "It's, it's detention." No, I did. My you have detention, you, had to, you had to stand. No, you really? would go in a room and you'd have to a stand form of for physical torture. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you have demerits? No, like a demerit was like you didn't go straight to detention. Like you get a demerit. I think if you got three demerits, then you got detention. No, detention was staying at the school for an hour. Yeah, no, we would get we would get detention. Our detention was if you got detention in Archbishop Malloy, you had to stand in a room before school and after school. That was one detention. So it'd be uh, two hours. Oh, so they God. really tried to deter. So it. nobody was. Did you still have people acting out? Oh my God, of course. People I mean, were just in detention the whole time. Yeah, because you would get detention if you wore two earrings, if or if you had an earring, if you had if you had one, if you were allowed one earring, and if you wore two, but but you could only have one. <laughs> That's but, ridiculous. But, what a ridiculous thing. But if you had a, second, we'll let you wear one. But if you have two, you have to stay before and after school. And the second one would have to be in your pocket or in your book bag. If you, you, you know, a lot of people used to pin it to their collar, or pin it to their tie. Yeah. That counted as on your person detention. Oh. Who are they, George Steinbrenner? Unbelievable. With all those rules? Yeah. No detention does not do any... No detention does not do any good because... He's saying, oh, because he's saying when kids are in detention, they actually like it. They tell me some teachers are fun and while in detention, they don't have to do any work most of the time. After detention, they would probably do what they did again to get them into detention if they enjoyed the teacher. So I think what they're basically saying is, is what we've gotten away from here in this country and just in life in general, probably all over the world, is the only thing that really works is if you beat your children. Beat them. <laughs> So, um, is, is well, you, you hit your kids? Is Jug a thing? Is Jug a I beat thing? the shit out of my seven day old today? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's fighting Logan Paul next week. <laughs> yeah, Jug, jug See, detention. It is something. Yeah, derived from the Latin sub jugum, hmm. meaning under a burden. Okay, Jugs is funny. You know, what like Jugs. Jugs. It's a funny word. Yeah. If you said, like, when you were young in high school, and, you know, you're talking about a woman's breast, would you say she has jugs, big melons, knockers? What would you say? Like, in high school, I'm not saying today. Sure, but I don't know if I've used, I use those words. <laughs> I don't know if I said, like... I think I, I would say, I think I, because I used to remember saying, like, you know, like, I remember my friend had a girlfriend, and she had, like, you know, like, the biggest boobs in the neighborhood. And Boo yeah, boobs. We would say boobs, but we would say, we would say, we would say she, she has jugs, or sometimes my friend Sean would say, that girl has pillows. <laughs> I used to have a bit where uh, so like, we we adhere to breasts for um f we ad we adhere to the word breasts for anything non-human. Humans have like a million different f things for for breasts. We say different, but like like we don't like, you know you won't walk in a KFC and be like let me get a bucket of chicken titties, right? <laughs> I am. Like, now. We just every. Can you, by the way, what's what's the email again? 
heybabepod at gmail.com. Email heybabepod at gmail.com. A video of you walking into KFC saying, oh. hey, can I get an order of chicken titties? Email it to Hey Babe and then yell, hey, babe, as you're being thrown out or escorted out by the police. Go, go Thursdays is for the babes. <laughs> and film the whole thing and you will get a chance. We'll, we'll, we'll invite you on the show virtually. Uh, yeah. I also wanted to show you guys this kid with the biggest mouth on earth. The biggest mouth? Do you mean like, like for real? Yeah, you mean physically r- biggest mouth? I'm like, you mean this kid's got a big mouth? Uh, you'll see. Okay. Oh! Holy oh my God! Shit. Oh, oh my God! Wow! That's fucking crazy! How is his jaw doing that? No! Wow! How does he do this? When he first opened that, I was like, I did not think that was gonna. How? So the kid says most people can't open their mouth two inches. This kid's, I mean, God, he has a baseball in his mouth. Uh, should I go grab a baseball and see if we could do this? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> at, I mean, look at how much room he's got above the lemon's nipple. I, he's putting the lemon in his mouth long ways. He puts the Coke can in his mouth. I mean, he could have fit another Coke in there. I mean, this kid, as soon as he turns 18, he's got to get an OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> the, the baseball goes in with room to spare. You, you could put two baseballs in there. Oh, he's a Twins baseball, too. He's a Minnesota kid. Hello, Minnesota. Wow. Wow. So, it, so what This is, kid has to come on the pod. Oh we got. We got it. Oh, we got to get him. We got to oh, get. What we'll do is we'll take bets on what could get in his mouth or not. Yes. <laughs> you know Can we reach out to this kid? If you know this kid, tell him that the we want. We want. We want to celebrate. We him. want this kid on the pot. And of course, if you know Kane Tanaka, also let her know she needs to come on. She needs to come on. But this kid, he has to come on the pot, and then it's, we have, we have to see if he can put the sign <laughs> in his mouth. <laughs> it's like his jaw unhinged. He looks it, like a snake. It looks. I was going to say it looks like a snake. Wow. Jesus, it's weird. Listen, you know, he could use it. And we could also, when he comes in, we'll give, we'll give him a haircut. <laughs> yeah, really. I think I, I mean. Those no, sideburns. Are no just... offense, but put some pert in that thing. <laughs> He's got, wow. A I love of... this kid. Oh, my God. Oh, my uh, God. I mean, I mean, if you're him, though, you're just obsessed with seeing what will or will not fit in your mouth. <laughs> it's I'm just of... walking around just literally trying to, to fit things in my and mouth. And it's one of those things where, like, it is such an unbelievable talent, but it's like, what do you do? Like, you know, you're 18, 19, you you're on a date with a girl, that. you're striking out. Everything you're saying is not working. Do you just go, look what I can do, and then go. <laughs> like, you know, like, and then see if that works, and then does she go check, please? You yeah, know? really. Or what, like, I'm saying, like, would that be something that you would bring up on a date? Like, this is my talent, or you can't really. I, I, I wonder what that feels like. It's got to be bad. Because it's, my mouth does not even open. I mean, could you imagine the first time he got strep throat and the doctor said, open your mouth, let me see your tongue. He was like, whoa! <laughs> okay, HelloFresh is one of these things where it's like. I, Changed I, my life. I have it. Yeah. I, so it's like, yeah, there's ad copy and there's things too, but it doesn't matter. Because you know what I, I know that they're doing now? Yeah. It used to be you would get 12 free meals with the promo code. Yeah. Now it's 14 free meals. No, it's not. Yes, it is, dude. This company is going insane. Are they you just, sh- they're giving away so much 12 free food. 12 free meals is more free meals than anyone's ever given me. Now they bumped it up to 14. 14 now. Because HelloFresh, first of all, it's 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store and 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal without sacrificing the quality. How all they the ingredients those delivered to your door, ready to go. You can make meals in 30 minutes or less. Yes. It literally, Hello Fresh is quick and easy meals, 15 to 20 minute meals. You're literally, I know how to cook now because of Hello Fresh, and I've been cooking for my family, cooking for myself, and it's the food is unbelievable. High quality, fresh ingredients sourced directly, directly from growers and showers, and delivered from the <laughs> farm to your front door in under a week, contact free. Of course, that means there's no COVID on the food. That's right. That's right. And if, if, you, if you have a long day of work, who wants to come home and stop at the grocery store first and pick out ingredients? Who wants to feed figure that all out it's ready for you to go as soon as you come home that's you what i like about be it be an absolute if you did yeah. not go to hellofresh.com slash hey babe 14 and use code hey babe 14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping they're giving you 14 meals for free Plus free shipping. You're robbing these people. You're robbing these people. HelloFresh is going to go out of business because they're giving away so much free food. We need to have a conference call with the people at HelloFresh. The deals are too good. I mean, where are they located? The North Pole? These people? <laughs> HelloFresh. 
dot com slash hey babe 14 use the code hey babe 14 for america's meals. number one, one meal kit <laughs> damn damn i'm trying to think of how there, he can I monetize it. what that is is there uh, clearly he was born he must be uh, i'm again taking a chance he must be born he must be missing a part of his anatomy that he can do that you think so you think something that's what i think the logical explanation has to be on why he can do it unless he does some kind of exercise look at his mom his mom's trying to get in on the I mean, his mom was like, what kind of thing did I create? Oh, my God. He's got a TikTok. I'm telling you right now, he's putting the soda can in his mouth, and there is room for about another soda can. Easily. I mean, because it's one of those things like this is fun and cool because he's 12, but once you get a little older, you're <laughs> yeah. like, all right, can we take down my As TikTok? As an old man, he's going to be terrifying. Terrifying. <laughs> oh Imagine God. kids ring his bell for trick-or-treating, and he opens the door and he's like, Gah. I that's, love this That's kid. how he monetizes horror movies, audition for horror movies. Is that right? He should, right? Oh, I think oh, he yeah. should. We should literally yeah. get him on the show and see what pieces of the podcast equipment he can fit in his mouth. <laughs> like, could he put Pimp's soundboard in his mouth? Could he put the 4K camera in his mouth? I, 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 I will have him on. The, let's do it. I'd love to have him on the podcast. We pod. can reach him. He's got a TikTok. Isaac Johnson. Or maybe we get him on Zoom and we just, we just, we just place bets on what, what objects he yeah, can put in his mouth. That'll be a fun Zoom game he could do with us. Fun. Do you think he's been asked to do this? I mean, at a party. Like, they, people are inviting him to parties just for his mouth. Yeah, but how's he been Not that he has a, doesn't have a good personality, but, like, they're like, you got to invite, what's his name? Isaac. You got to invite Isaac. Yeah, the thing is, though, I'm sure he has a great personality, but and I, I would love to talk to him and get to know him, but I, it really, any conversation would just be kind of just being polite to get to, all right, open your mouth and let's put things, I, put objects in your mouth. Now, what world record would you want to be known for like this, like a party trick world record? Oof. Uh, I'd like um party trick like that, like open the mouth of the kid who can count to 100 the quickest. The kid who can what? count to 100. The, let's see if he can put the kid who can count to 100 the quickest in, in his, his mouth. mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do that? <laughs> if, you, uh, if you were dating a girl and then um, you didn't know that about her and you were like months in. Let me and just then say, all of a sudden she opened her mouth the size of a bear trap. <laughs> would you, would that affect anything? I will say this. It's probably... A guy, a girl doing that, I, how do I say this? Maybe don't say it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. This has been hey, babe. <laughs> we at? We at? No. We got like 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, um, um, what, um, what were you going to say? Like, say, like, tip, well, like, tip, 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 tip handle with care. <laughs> okay. I'll say it yeah, like I this. Mean, uh, I'm talking about, let's say all parties are in their 20s. A girl opening her mouth like that would be... You know, more guys would be more interested in a girl opening her mouth like that than and girls would be interested in a guy, guy opening his mouth like that. That's what else. That's what right, I'm trying to right. say. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because even though a girl opening her mouth like that means nothing, I mean, so what am I going to, st- what, what does that do? Okay, right. so I can put my penis scrotum and both legs in your mouth. I mean, what does it matter? <laughs> what am I going to camp in your mouth? But I'm just saying, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know how yeah, guys no are. girl is going to be like, he put the whole titty in his mouth. Right, exactly. Like, what, what does that do for them? But I bet you he's been asked to do that. Well, yeah. wait, he's a kid, right? Yeah, yeah he's, he's a, a kid. kid. Uh, so he, he hasn't will been be asked. asked to do that. He hasn't been asked. But oh, yeah. look forward to it. Look forward to it. <laughs> how about this? It, July. F- well, today is July 1st. This episode, when, when is this episode coming out? I mean, mid-July. Mid-July. Okay. Oh, wow. So this episode isn't even coming out next week. Oh wow! So I'm wearing the Fourth of July shirt, and it, Fourth of July was weeks ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so yeah. So I, if you're watching this, I blew off both my hands in the fireworks accident, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I'm now a lobster. Um, um, it's July first oh, yeah. today, which when, this, but it means that it's met, it's Bobby Bonilla Day. Yep. You know about this, right? I do. Bobby Bonilla Day, which is if you guys don't know, if you're if you're not a Mets fan or a baseball fan, or just don't know about this contract, um, Bobby Bonilla, who used to play for the New York Mets. Got a contract. I forgot what the actual totality of the co- total number of money in the contract was, but instead of getting it paid out over the course of three, four years like a normal person, he decided to get <laughs> $1.19 million a year every year until 2035 when he'll be 72 years old. And he hasn't played in 20 years. He hasn't played in 20 years. So he took he took the money over the course of, I believe, 35 years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Mets, which is kind the of Mets genius have to pay him it's genius though that is wild how funny is it though i would take that what would you do if because he because the, the reason why he did that is he already had signed a big contract years before he already had money okay so he's like instead of just getting a butt you know bunch of money yeah he was like, like when you win the lottery just, you take the cash payment up front or you do the annual i would do annual yeah what would you do uh i go up front 
I Why? want all that liquidity working for me immediately. I don't, right. I don't want to leave it up to chance. I'll, I'll take the money. I'll invest it. I'll do whatever I need to do with it. I want the lump sum now. Because anything can happen. Anything can happen, babe. Yep. Yeah. Hey, babe. Um, yeah, speaking of anything can happen, if you go to ChrisDComedy.com, I'm back on the road. I got a lot of stand-up dates coming up. We just added tickets. You ready for this? We just added tickets to Philadelphia, Providence, and Boston. All those shows were sold out, but now Philadelphia, Providence, and Boston. If you live in those cities, ChrisDComedy.com. Where the tickets are there, and then we got Nashville, uh, we got Eatontown, New Jersey, we got Fox Theater, Foxwoods in October, so all the tickets there, but Philadelphia, Providence, Boston, added tickets, go get them, christycomedy.com for all my stand updates, babe. Very nice, very yep. nice. I have uh, in two weeks from now, uh, well, actually, probably around when this comes out, uh, we have a big announcement, a big Joker's announcement about, about our tour, uh, which is in place and uh, about to be announced. And then uh, I'm working on a solo tour now, although I think I'm going to be doing an Austin date September 24th. There we go. And then one day, we had talked about this right before the Pandy Wandy. Sal and I had talked about going on a little tour through the UK. We obviously can't do it anytime soon. But we're, we, we should start thinking about 2022-ish, whenever you're done with the Joker tour and your solo stuff, me and you through the UK with the pimp. I would love that. Because we were talking, remember we were talking about, we would just go go ahead and do it. Yeah, we could do stand-up and the pod. Stand-up and the pod in the UK. I want to do a, That would be real a, fun. A UK, yeah. Uh, UK peeps, if you're watching, let us know. Yeah. We know that you and also, And also, Thursday. Shout out UK. Shout out UK, by the way. Shout out the United Kingdom. Shout out the Delta variant. Yeah. Um, you <laughs> Shout out Delta Airlines. Shout out Delta Airlines. <laughs> this is why I fly American, because I got the Delta has the variant. Shout out UK, the country, and the letters. And because, the letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out kingdoms in general. Yeah. Shout out United Airlines. Yeah. Shout yeah. out, you know. Yeah. Shout out everybody. Shout out lines. Shout out lines. Shout, shout out white out, lines. White Shout out, lines. yeah. Shout out, the, you know, the North Sea. Um, Ready for this. Also, how about this? Thursdays, in general, your Thursdays just got better because you already had Thursdays, hey, babe, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Now for the next 10 to oh, 20 Oh, it's on. Weeks, it started last week. It started last week. Every Thursday now, you keep, you keep it locked on True TV. 10 o'clock, you got Impractical Jokers. 10.30, you got my show, Backyard Bar Wars. And Thursdays at 11 a.m., you got the both of us. So it's like- Thursdays, we have you on lockdown now. It's Christine South Thursdays. That's what it is. That's what it is. TGITs. TGITT Jerry's. There you go. TGITT Jerry's. Oh, another thing. Hey, babe, pod at gmail.com. We are making the merch. We're in the middle of sourcing ideas. We want to know from you, heybabepod at gmail.com. Tell us what you want to see the merch on and tell us what you want to see merch of. Your favorite little quips, sayings, this or that, inside jokes. You want it on a thong. You want it on a flip flop. You want it on a, I mean, you want it on a, you know, you want it on a potato. Whatever you want. Just I give want us your potato. ideas. We, we, we have our own, but we want to see what the resounding feedback is. And, and who knows? Maybe we'll, We'll see your idea, and we'll we'll, we'll think it's good enough to, to make the I'd merch. I love out. it on a potato. I'd love, yeah. Not enough people do do merch on food. I think we got to do that. <laughs> I know we did it with the peanut butter. Now I, I like to move into potatoes. Uh, uh, two years ago, I think it was. I sent uh, there was a service that I saw online that sent people a potato with a message on it. And so for Christmas, I sent Casey Jost just a, a potato, and they inscribed uh, they inscribed uh, they wrote on it for me. Casey Jost. The best person, go follow him on Instagram, at Casey Jost, I believe, right? Yeah, yep. I've never seen a guy look better with, with gray hair than Casey Jost. Oh, Pulls off man. gray hair better than Richard Gere. Yeah, yeah, better he's than Clooney. He's the new Richard Gere. He's a new Clooney. Casey yeah, Jost, he's a new yeah. Clooney. I'll, Casey, follow. Richard Gere should stick Casey Jost up his ass. That's exactly right, instead of? Gerbils. Gerbils. Because, well, you know that story. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's true or not. Yeah. But that's, everybody thinks Richard Gere thinks the gerbil's up his butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't know the story? No, I have. I don't know the the, the, the details surrounding it. Like he walks around with a gerbil in no, there? No, it was some story like somebody caught him putting gerbils up his butt or he got a gerbil delivery to his house one day and the FedEx guy said he saw him, the gerbil hanging out of his butt. Something like that. Yeah. It's some sounds, story. Sounds iffy. Which who knows if it's true or not. Highly questionable cultural history of Richard Gere's ass gerbil. But is gerbil <laughs> in the ass a thing for real in general? Yes, that I always thought was kind of got to be fake too. Dude, when I was a physical therapist, when I was a physical therapist, yeah, I saw the sickest, <laughs> dude, 
Guy comes in, Sal, listen to me. Gerbling. Guy comes in, no, not- Gerbling or gerbil stuffing or gerbil shooting. <laughs> yeah, is an- un- Sexual practice of inserting small live animals, usually gerbils, but also mice, hamsters, rats, and other rodents, Ooh. into the human rectum to obtain stimulation. Some variations of reports suggest that the rodent be covered in psychoactive substance, such as <laughs> cocaine. Prior to being inserted, you're gonna put a coked up ger- gerbil beers and not could be concerned? rodents covered in psychoactive psychoactive substance such as cocaine prior to being inserted for the Patreon market. Will you do it? I would do it. You wouldn't do it, Sal. I would do it. Would you do it? That you're, that's all we need for Patreon. Evan, you get a rodent, you, you rub it up in tear, cocaine, and all the tears come on. It's just that one video. Just that one video. Come on. So okay, so I'm a physical yeah, therapist, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Guy yeah. comes in, excruciating back pain. We're doing every trick in the book. Every trick in the book. We cannot like for, you pulled an ace out of his. We do. We brought in. We brought in David Copperfield. We brought in. <laughs> they're doing everything. We're, we're doing. We're trying so hard. We, we're literally everything I you could imagine. This test, that test, called in the 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 the, the, the my boss who's got thirty years practice. We cannot find out. We cannot find out why this guy has excruciating like back pain. And we're asking him all these questions. We're saying, sir, sir, what? What did you do? Like, what is it? He goes, I swear I heard it lifting weights. And we're saying, we've done every test that would indicate lifting weights. You know, if you, if you heard it lifting weights, these tests would have reproduced the pain by now and we would have figured out 100% what is going on oh, in your back. Baby. So we guess, you want to guess? Are we taking guesses? So we finally, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because it's mind blowing. Okay. So when we finally, when we finally actually, I'm talking about everybody comes in, orthopedic surgeon came in too, because the, the physical therapy clinic we were at was like a, a, a br- you ran through the whole practice. Well, well, it was a whole, it was a whole like healthcare building. So yeah. we had the orthopedic surgeon was down the hall. <laughs> yeah. So we, the physical therapist couldn't figure it out. Orthopedic surgeon could not figure it out. Mm. We brought in, um, a special, there was a specialized back surgeon couldn't figure it out. A plastic surgeon, the person who did plastic surgery on JWoww, the guy who gave JWoww <laughs> her new jugs, he, he couldn't figure it out. She got new detentions. She got new detentions. Okay. So we don't know what to do. So finally, we say the only thing left to do is we have to bring in an x-ray machine. We bring this guy into, the, he is literally, he's been like, I don't want to do an x-ray. I don't want to do an x-ray. Like, do you want the pain to go away? Then you'll do the x-ray. We put him, we all, and we're all there because it's all our patient. And now people just want to know. We put this guy underneath the x-ray machine and this has been a baby. <laughs> I didn't see it coming. <laughs>